Hey guys, you wanna learn what it takes to make a flagstone patio just like this one? Well, stick around because today we're gonna to talk through everything it takes to move the dirt, to put the foundation in, lay the stone, cut the stone, and ultimately put the polymeric sand in so you can have a perfectly beautiful flagstone patio for your backyard. Okay guys, any big landscape project has to start with some sort of plan. In our case, we hired a landscape architect who helped uh, lay it out for us. Very reasonable, $500. They helped lay out the entire project, all the types of plants, all of the um, trees, everything, hardscape, all of that. So I would recommend talking to a landscape professional at least to help lay it out. Then you can start to work through the landscape and actually build it um, on your own and, and at a fraction of the cost of hiring a professional. Um, but the other big thing when we were laying out our design is I like to think about the furniture first. In our case, we have a natural gas burning um, fire pit that we made ourselves that, that is the center piece of our patio space. And then we have um, two and a half by two and a half foot chairs that um, surround the fire pit. Now, if you, if you look at my scribble here, um, it's a five foot diameter base uh, table, two foot between the, ta the, the chairs, two and a half foot chairs, and then at least three foot behind. And this is what defined the size of our patio. We actually thought about those furniture settings and we wanted to make sure that that would fit this type of patio. So that was a big consider consideration as we figured out the size. And oftentimes it's a problem because a lot of times I see people make patios, they're too small. Um, and part of the reason they're too small is because they didn't think about what the furniture was and what how it would function as a space. So I really recommend thinking about the furniture, at least in the abstract or in a, in a general sense, and then space through that furniture. Lay it out in your patio or your grass. Put, put the furniture there roughly, then figure out how big you want it. Um, but don't, uh, don't build the patio and then try to furnish it. You wanna really do furniture first. Um, the next big thing is how you get on and off of the patio. In our case, we have our curved stairs. The house, the, the house has steps coming down here. And we have another little curved staircase over here that comes onto the patio. And you wanna just consider your walkways and make sure that you have enough space around all of these different staircases so you're not, you're not butting into someone or you know, just that there's enough air there. I really recommend also taking like a garden hose or something that kind of mark out the perimeter. After you do that, then spray paint it, but take some time with this. Don't rush it. Uh, make sure that you mark where you want your patio, no matter what the size or shape, mark it out, live with it a little bit, put some furniture on it, test it, uh, before you go to all this work uh, to, to build the patio. Next step, let's talk construction. Hey guys, so I'm gonna take you through this. This is what I call a cross-section drawing. So as if I cut through the middle of my property. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the house up here, and in my case, the lake over here. And this was the existing hill right here, okay? So what we did is we took dirt and we backfilled this area, all right? And then we added a retaining wall of boulders. Uh, we backfilled all this with, with dirt, sand, compacted, sand, compacted. Um, it was quite a bit of filling, a lot of backfill, okay? Um, we rough graded it out to there, all right? Then what we did is we came in um, with about eight inches of gravel uh, above that, and we added in about eight inches of gravel. If you notice here, I have one degree angle. That's because as we were putting that gravel in, I was constantly checking this to make sure A, it was flat, and B, it was angled, slightly pitched. In my case, it was just barely in the line of the level. And I did that by using a, a piece of rope from the house to the end of the patio. Um, I put a line level on there. Uh, the line level then told me if I was basically roughly there, and I'd measure, so if this is the, the string, I'd measure down from here and just make sure this was consistent because my string was what was angled. Now, in my case, I pitched down away from the house. I pretty much just did that. I didn't take it on either side. So once I did my rough compaction, so this right here is the, the larger stone with fines uh, that I'll, I'll point out later in the video exactly what that is, all right? Then I came in with about three inches of finer gravel. Um, and this was a very fine limestone gravel that I used as sort of my, my base, my leveling base is what I like to call it. 
Um, it's basically uh, very fine. And when I go to start putting the stones in, I can kind of take a little bit away. I can tip it because these stones are not exactly the same thickness. All right, some of them are one inch, one and three quarters, even two inches. So this 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 top layer was all leveled, but it, it enabled me to bed it down or bed it up uh, based on the stone. So I added that and it too is also pitched. All right, so after I did that, I compacted between each step. I made sure I was completely level and angling away from my house. Very important. This step takes a lot of work, all right? A lot of material, a lot of uh, compaction. Take your time on this. This is very important because if it's not level, if it's not completely compacted, then it ends up, uh, you, you, your patio is going to settle in uneven ways and not look good. So once you get the entire thing compacted and angling roughly, I one degree is what I did, more or less, but we're all angled, we're compacted. Um, the next step is to start actually laying the stones, all right? And here I drew out the stones roughly. Uh, we're gonna talk through how to cut the stones later in this video, but um, you start puzzling together the pieces, all right? Now this is a fairly complicated uh, part of it and actually a hugely time-consuming thing. But when you puzzle it together, um, I was shooting for as small of gaps as possible. Some people do two, three inch gaps. I was shooting for like half inch to one inch gaps, um, whatever you prefer. But the tighter the gaps, the more time you're gonna take to puzzle it together. Um, and then in between the gaps, you're gonna use what's called polymeric sand. I used the Gator Dust brand, which I highly recommend uh, and is in the show link on, um, I think I got it from Amazon actually. Um, you put the sand in uh, to the gaps as you're pounding and you literally just pound it in, brush it in. What's nice about the polymeric sand that uh, I'm recommending is it doesn't create any kind of haze um, onto the stone. It just, you, you literally put it into the cracks, you hammer it so it settles down and then you add water. Within 15 minutes, it's, it's rain safe. Within a day, it's walkable. It's really great. So once you go through, you fill all your cracks after you've pieced everything together, um, you wet it down, you let it settle, and that's pretty much um, that's pretty much your patio at that point. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the different types of stone. As I mentioned, I did that eight-inch base. Um, I did that out of um, this gravel right here, and as you can see, it's much larger. It's got some fines in it, but it's angular. Okay. Now some people do this out of crushed concrete. Uh, you could do it out of um, crushed limestone, but I like this size. Um, you know, in general, it's it's a really nice size to use. When you go back over with the compactor, it compacts really nicely. So that's my bottom eight inches, sort of the coarse base, all right? Next, the top two inches, I use this ultra fine, um, I, I call it stone dust, almost. It's, it's, it's very fine. Um, it's got, uh, also got fines in it. But what happens with this stuff is when you compact it down, it ends up um, not only becoming very solid, but you can kind of scrape away a little bit to account for the different thicknesses of the stone. So this finer stuff is really helpful um, with the final grade of the stoning and making sure that the stones are all level to each other because you can just take a little bit out. Some people use sand here, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to avoid sand because uh, ants tend to migrate towards sand. So I'm not using sand on that. I'm just using this very ref refined um, limestone, crushed limestone um, base. Okay, the tools for this project are pretty straightforward, pretty primitive, really. Uh, in terms of a scoring device, I normally use like an awl, screwdriver, maybe a carpenter pencil, but this stuff will just dull the heck out of a pencil. So you normally scrape it uh, to score it. Uh, so any kind of scraping device typically will work. Um, as I've mentioned earlier in the video, needing to have some layout string, I like to just get this from, you know, the hardware store. It can stretch nice and tight. It's a bright color. You can see it pretty easily. Um, next big thing here is the gloves. Uh, you know, <clears throat> you can buy nice gloves, but I'm going to tell you right now, no matter how good they are, they're going to tear up. So <clears throat> typically I just get a pair of cheap, you know, 10 pairs of cheap gloves. I put a new pair on each day. Uh, sometimes you can get like, you know, these are mechanics gloves. They're a little nicer. They might last for two days, but in general, this stuff will tear up your hands. So you have to have something. So whether or not you use good ones or, um, you get bad, like multiple gloves, uh, that's up to you. Um, the next thing is the good old fashioned masonry hammer and a dead blow hammer. Okay. Now the dead blow hammer is very important. Um, you can kind of hear it. 
it's got sand in it. So it, it when you hit it, it pushes a force down on top of whatever you're hitting. Do not hit your thumb with it. Um, but these are pretty typical. They're really nice when you're tapping. Uh, you're going through and you're tapping, trying to set the stone down into the base sand. Um, so I really recommend a dead blow hammer. Second, the masonry hammer is a must. You need this for chipping, for cutting, uh, for just pr pretty much anything. You got to have a masonry hammer for this project. Next, uh, as I sh as I'm going to show you, uh, in terms of cutting, sometimes I do resort to a, a hand grinder with a diamond cutting blade on it. Um, the trick to this is when you cut, you have to go back in and make sure that you know you knock the the edges so it doesn't look real clean because you want it to look organic. But sometimes in order to cut it really just right, especially when you're trying to maintain a thin gap, you got to have something like this. So angle grinder, of course. You know, whenever you're using that safety protection with your eyes, your ears. Um, so, you know, a pair of head, you know, headphones or um, head safety protection uh, earphones are, are really important. Um, next, I have a series of a couple different devices. This is a pretty neat one I just got that will actually form to the, the shape. Um, that's kind of nice. So if you're if you're next to a stone, you can actually push it uh, in this little device here, which will be on the link for to Amazon at the end of the video and in the show notes but this little guy is great for just coming around a corner you knock it in uh and then you're able to tell what the actual profile of the shape is really nice little tool not necessary but it helps when you're doing a lot of it last but not least is the level i have uh, a four foot a six foot and a two foot i use varying sizes i even have a little torpedo level a small one but you don't have to be crazy with this I just like to lay them across from stone to stone and make sure everything's sort of um, flat. Ultimately, the base, all of the major leveling work has been done with the base. So the, the pitch of the um, patio and where the water is going to go is pretty much done. So now you're just looking from stone to stone, ballpark, make sure you're tipping the right angle. But, uh, you know, a multitude of different types of levels are really handy. That's about it. Other than that, it's your hands, your back, and your knees. Okay, so the next step is getting the material to your house. Now, in this case, I had an excavation company come and give me a hand in terms of delivering it into my backyard. I went and picked it up, but if I had to do it again, I would just have the stone company deliver the stuff. It's almost 2,000 pounds per pallet, which is pretty heavy. Uh, the only way you're going to really move it is with a tractor or hand bringing down each piece, which would be crazy. So in this case, uh, have it delivered to the backyard so you're ready to go. Okay, here we go. Uh, as you can see, I'm starting off by cutting. Uh, this is a delicate process. Um, what I like to do is lay the stones out. Um, you can kind of see a few pieces there laying out. Uh, as they're laid out, I can come and I can take a look at which ones fit. This is a big puzzle. Amy also is starting to help here. She's laying those pieces out for me as I start to fit and piece and cut. So there's a lot of down on your knees work. You, ideally, you'd have a second person helping you, kind of um, piecing it, putting them in place. Uh, I'm looking at each corner, each side. How does it fit, rotate, flip, you know, all these different things. But a second person helping to kind of do that is, is helpful. But you can see there, we're starting to accumulate the pieces that don't fit. I'm unpacking them. Um, I'm also taking from a few different pallets, which really helps. Uh, you know, we had three pallets there that we were actually four pallets and we were just sort of mixing and matching it. So the colors are switched up. Also the piece sizes are different, um, but it's really about variety here and just taking your time and seeing how the pieces fit, how they want to fit together. Um, and then wherever you can nip and tuck. Now keep in mind, I had, I was shooting for a very small gap. Uh, you know, my gap was anywhere from a half inch to three quarter inch. A lot of people shoot for like two, three inches, which would make this process way easier. Um, but I was going pretty tight. Uh, I just didn't want a ton of grout area. So I decided to go really pretty tight um, on those uh, mortar lines. Okay guys, so as I mentioned, when you go to start cutting this, you can either do it with a hammer or you can do it with a um, uh, with a with an angle grinder. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a hammer. 
So the trick is, if I need to take off this corner, for example, I'm gonna score it, let's just say roughly that. This isn't an exact arc. Then I'm gonna go, th go through and I'm gonna tap. Now again, this isn't an exact arc. I'm gonna tap, 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 all the way down that line. And eventually, it just like that. So you can see it pretty much follows the line. It's nice, loose. Um, it's a it's an organic line. It doesn't look perfect, but it's pretty close. Then. With the hammer, you can go back through, clean it up. Just like that. Okay, next day. Um, this time we have an uh, extra guy, which is helpful. <laughs> Our friend Travis has given us a hand here. And uh, again, a few people kind of placing the stones, getting ahead of the cutter. Uh, heck, even another person cutting is helpful. The other thing I'm really keeping an eye on here is the, the height of the stones because they're not all the same size. So that loose stone that's on top that we talked about earlier, the smaller, finer stone, I'm kind of pulling some of that out, I'm adding some in, and that's what's making it so the stones are level on top. So that's all done by hand uh, and just kind of feeling it, but that is also a part of this and keeping the stones from tipping. Uh, you know, they're not all consistent. So that's a real key here as well. So this goes on for another two days. It took me about four, five days to get it all in. But this is the final result. Once it's all pieced together, it's pretty awesome looking. Next step, polymeric sand in. Now this is a really important step because without this, uh, the patio is not gonna be solid and it'll start to crack and not, not stay even. So as you can see, what we're doing here is we've got the Gator Dust polymeric sand that we got from Amazon, which is in the show links. The key here is as you add the sand in, you wanna go behind with a hammer and be mallet tapping the whole time. So as you tap, it'll actually settle into the crack. Um, it's very important so it settles down all the way down into those cracks. Otherwise, it'll just be on the top and it won't, it won't work right. So you wanna make sure that you, you tap the whole thing, brush it all off, all the excess before you hose it. Once it's all cleaned off, hit it with the leaf blower just to get the dust off. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start from the lowest point and work your way up with the water. Okay guys, total cost for the project was right around $5,000. I spent $3,500 on the flagstone, $1,000 on the base stone material, and right around $500 on the polymeric sand. So all in all, it was pretty reasonable. It took me about two weeks to really deal with the whole project from getting the base put in uh, and then dealing with the flagstone. Uh, you know, I did right around 450 square feet, so that's a pretty good sized patio. If you do a smaller patio, obviously it'll take less time. Um, but in the end, it's really worth it. Uh, obviously the product we, we love, the durability, the flexibility of it, and the look, the natural look of it built in with all of our plants, we really, it's, it's really second to none. Check out my other video if you're interested in the curved flagstone steps that I did. That video goes through the whole process of doing the flagstone steps in our house. Uh, and you know, that also is a very easy thing to do for a DIYer. Thanks again guys for watching the video. Please smash the like and don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day, I really appreciate your time.